Hi, you guys. All right, we are gonna switch it up today and we're not gonna make Chaldean food. That's right. We're gonna make some kind of little Italian food today. And I have a really good Alfredo sauce recipe. My kids absolutely love this recipe. They beg me for it. My brother is coming over for dinner tonight and I figured I would make um, Alfredo roll-ups, chicken Alfredo roll-ups. It's kind of like lasagna, but I roll them individually and place them in a pan and homemade Caesar salad. And I have the best Caesar salad dressing recipe for you. You will never buy it bottled again. So let's get started on the Alfredo sauce. Over here, I've already, like I've told you before, rotisserie chicken is your best friend because it is a huge time saver. Rotisserie chicken, okay, I'll shred it up. I've already pre-cooked my lasagna noodles, okay? So these lasagna noodles, you can get um, the oven ready if you're making lasagna, but for the Alfredo roll-ups, you need to be able to bend the lasagna noodles. So all you have to do is take a pot, you know, I have my trusty little pot. I'm making a few extra over here. Um, put a pot of cold water, a little sprinkle of salt, a little drizzle of oil, Boil the water. Once it's boiling, put your noodles in. Cook it according to the package directions. I think it's like eight minutes until they're soft. Then drain them, rinse them with cold water, and set them aside so they're ready to go. So the noodles are all set ready to go. I'm just making a few extra. Um, now, I have a saucepan here, and I'm going to start the Alfredo sauce. So for the Alfredo sauce, you're going to need um, half a block of cream cheese, a whole stick of butter. Okay. You know it's it's me, right? I'm not gonna do any low fat. I'm not cutting out any kale. I want Alfredo sauce, okay? So we're not going like low kale here. So just stick with me, all right? So half a block of cream cheese, a stick of butter, some Parmesan cheese, you're gonna need a cup of that, some minced garlic. Now you can mince fresh garlic, but you can also buy it um, in the jar, already minced, okay? Time saver there, right? Garlic powder and Italian seasoning, um, salt and pepper, and heavy cream. All right, so that's, that's it for the Alfredo. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my, beef, uh, my um, flame here, and I'm gonna put it like to medium to high. The light, I just got distracted because my lights are flickering, so I don't know if I'm, it's getting ready to thunderstorm or what outside, but hopefully the power doesn't go out. That happened last week. So I'm heating up the pan, and I'm gonna put the stick of butter in the pan. I know, a whole stick of butter, yes, a whole stick of butter. Butter makes everything better. It's good, guys. Butter is amazing. Put it on in there. I'm going to definitely, now that the weather is breaking, I'm going to have to get back to running every day because um, the way I eat requires me to exercise. Okay, so the stick of butter is going to go in. And if you have yourself like a whisk, use this. And I'm just going to try to start spreading it out over the pan. I'm gonna turn it to medium, okay? Medium heat, so this, that I don't scorch the butter. You guys, this recipe is so good. This Alfredo sauce, you could just make the sauce and do some Alfredo noodles and then throw it over the sauce and you'd be done. But I'm just making it a little bit more uh, fancy, I guess. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna get my cream cheese, if I can open the box. I swear it's like getting into Fort Knox, these boxes. I mean, really, do they not want us to use it? Or like, what is it? Okay, there we go, I got it. Seriously, could they make that any more complicated? All right, now I'm just gonna cut that in half because I need half a block of cream cheese. All right. So while that butter's melting, now you're gonna add, this sauce could not be easier. You're gonna add your half a block of cream cheese to it. That gives it like this richness, you know? I always just put my garbage in my sink and then I empty it at the end. So the butter's melting really good. Now this cream cheese is gonna break down and it takes a little bit for the cream cheese to melt. So that's okay. It'll break down eventually. So <clears throat> as this is cooking, let's do our measurements. Yes, I said measurements, I know, shocking. Okay. So this is what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to use, I thought I saw a fuzzy on there, this teaspoon. My little measuring spoons are so cute. I like them. All right, we're going to do 
And be sure to keep an eye on that. You don't want it to scorch, okay? So we are going to do a teaspoon of Italian seasoning. I always just, I have these little spice jars that I keep in my drawer. But just a teaspoon of Italian seasoning. There go my lights again. You guys, keep your fingers crossed. I don't want to lose power again. Okay, and we're going to do a teaspoon of garlic powder. I can get that in there. There we go. A teaspoon of garlic powder. I am going to do, let's see, you know me and my garlic. Let me give this a quick stir because I don't want it to burn. You can hear it. I'm going to turn it down just a, just a little bit. I really don't want that butter to scorch. So I'm going to break up that cream cheese a little bit. It already smells amazing. Like you can't go wrong with, you know, butter and cream cheese and spices, right? Let's kind of stick it to my thing. That's okay. I'm just going to break it off of here. There we go. Melt it around. There we go. See, I'm just breaking up that cream cheese. Even if you want to like chop it up small before you put it in the in the pot, you could do that. Have this too high. All right. Now I'm going to add that minced garlic, and I'm going to do a teaspoon, okay? Mmm. Oh, garlic. I love your garlic. Put that on the side. I wish, like, I really wish we had smell of vision so you could smell it. So you can kind of see it's all just getting mixed on in there together like that. Now, that cream cheese is melting down, finally. Another thing that I'm going to add cream, heavy cream. Okay, this might be like one of those meals that you have to eat once a month or something because it is so high in calories and fat, but really who gives a damn? It's good. You know, you live once. Eat, right? I mean, it's important to watch, I guess, but... All right, so now this is um, 16 ounces of heavy cream, all right? And I'm going to pour all of it in there. You need all of it. Two cups of heavy cream. Pour that on in. It's, I told you, it's like a super easy Alfredo recipe, and people will love it. If you have company, like you have a dinner party or something, and you want something quick and easy, I'm telling you, this Alfredo, you'll love it. It's better than any, I don't know, I've never had Alfredo this good. The sauce that's this good. Now you're going to see all that butter and stuff on the top, and it'll all start to mix in there. Once the sauce starts, you know, cooking... Don't worry if it looks like there's a lot of butter in there. Like right now, it kind of looks like there's too much butter. Don't worry. It's all going to, once you add the Parmesan and everything, it's all going to be fine. And you can see that cream cheese is finally melting into the sauce there. Okay. Now, once this starts cooking a little bit, I'm going to take some shredded Parmesan cheese and I'm going to add a cup of the shredded Parmesan to the sauce. And right now, while it's still cooking, I'm going to take my black pepper. I'm not going to measure this part. I'm trying to get better with measuring, you guys, because I know it makes life easier if you're trying to follow a recipe. And there's been a few people who have asked me to send them, like, the recipe step-by-step, step, like, type it out. I don't mind doing that. But if I don't get back to you right away, it's because I'm distracted doing something with the kids or something. But eventually, I will try to post you know, the written recipe somewhere. I, I guess I'll have to do that. I don't know. All right, so now I'm going to take my pepper. You know, I just give it a few sprinkles, whatever. Same thing with the salt. Just a few little... All right, that's it with salt. Now, the one thing about this, you have to stay on it. You cannot, like, leave this and go do something else. And this will scorch and burn because it's the heavy cream. So you want to constantly be watching it, constantly be giving it a stir, and then once it's cooked through, if you want to take it off the heat and set it aside until you're done prepping, that's fine. You can do that. So this is what I'm going to do. This is looking really good. Everything seems to be all nice and melted in. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add this entire thing of Parmesan cheese. The entire thing of Parmesan. Oh, yes. Bye-bye. Mm-hmm. Really, the whole thing, okay? I know. I know. You guys must think, wow, she doesn't care about calories. Well, you know, I just want to enjoy my food. Okay. So at this point, let's say all you wanted to do 
was make some Alfredo noodles and use the sauce. You're done. The sauce is done. That's it, you guys. It was that simple. So then you would just make Alfredo sauce, you know, boil them, whatever, drain them, put the sauce on top, sprinkle some parsley and parmesan, bam, you're done. Throw a salad on the table and you're good to go. Okay, so here's, oh, oh, Lord. Alfredo happens to be one of my favorites. I love it. You could do it vegetarian too. You could, you could leave it without any chicken in it. You could add shrimp instead. That would be fine. Or you can just leave it, you know, vegetarian. Add some vegetables to it, whatever you want to do. All right. So this is going to thicken a little bit more as it cooks. You just don't want to let it boil, all right? So I'm going to put it really, really low, the flame, really, really low, and I'm going to leave it. I'm going to go get the stuff ready and move the camera so that you can see what I'm doing with the filling for the roll-up part, okay? So let me pause for one second, and I'll kind of clean up here so that you can see what's going on. I'll be right back, okay? Okay, now I'm back and I'm going to make the filling for the roll-up part. And the filling is super easy too. This, this recipe is going to blow your mind because it's so easy, but it's so decadent and delicious that when you eat it, when somebody eats it, they're going to be like, wow, she really knows how to cook, you know? So I'm going to use this little 15-ounce thing of ricotta cheese. I got this one at Aldi. I'm going to use one egg and some mozzarella cheese, shredded mozzarella cheese, about a cup of it. You can kind of eyeball it. And then I chopped up some parsley. And I probably have about three tablespoons of parsley there. My sauce is still on, you guys, but it's just really low and I'm giving it an occasional stir, okay? So for the ricotta, I don't have to use a knife for this, but I'm gonna grab a knife. I can never get these lids off, seriously. I'm like special or something, here we go. All right, let me, there we go. Take off the ricotta and you're just gonna pour that right in. And ricotta, if you've never used it before, it's just a cheese, it's an Italian type cheese and they use it in a lot of dishes for fillings, like when they do um, some kinds of, some types of raviolis and stuff like that, they use it in some desserts. It's a mild cheese, it's not very strong. So I'm gonna put that in there. I'm gonna add one egg one egg, all right, get my hands off. I'm gonna use about a cup of shredded mozzarella cheese, all right? And I'm not gonna measure it yet, I'm just gonna eyeball it. But if you wanna measure, it's about a cup, okay? So I'm just gonna add a little bit more. A little bit more, there we go, okay, that is good. Back to the salt and pepper, little sprinkle, little sprinkle, little pepper, good enough. Just a sprinkle, okay? Now I'm gonna add that parsley. And you're just gonna mix it all together. Mix it all together nicely. It's such a pretty, it has such a pretty color to it, you know? And the parsley, I love fresh parsley. Like I love to eat fresh parsley. I should have actually taken a picture of our dinner yesterday. My in-laws came over, my brother-in-law and his pretty wife came, and their son, and we barbecued kebab, and I made the eggplant salad that um, that girl posted. Oh my God, I'm forgetting her name, Sarah. I'm sorry, I'm sorry if you're watching me. I love your eggplant salad so, so much. It's Eichel's sister, I know that. So thank you for that beautiful recipe, because it was delicious, but I wish I would have taken a picture of it. Okay, so just keep mixing this. Keep mixing it. All right, good enough. And it's kind of, you'll see, it's like very moist and that's exactly what you want. Like that. Now, I'm just gonna set that aside. I'm gonna move that stuff. Let me put this in my little garbage area there. Put that over there. And let me just take a minute and wipe off that extra Italian. Parsley. That's Italian leaf parsley. It doesn't matter. You can flat leaf parsley. I didn't get. I don't get the curly parsley. All right. Let me just give. Make sure our sauce is good here. And what I would suggest have like a little plate there. I usually have a little plate to set my thing on, so it's not quite so messy. But uh, what I would suggest is to always taste. Give a little taste to your food your sauce before you even do anything and make sure that it's got enough flavor for you. Mm. 
I could seriously, seriously sit with this spoon and eat the entire pan of that sauce all by itself. Seriously, I need an intervention. I need an Alfredo intervention. It is so good, you guys. Oh my gosh. Okay, so that's on low. These noodles are just hanging out on low. I just wanted to make a couple extra. So now this is the part where we're gonna assemble our little roll-ups, okay? So you need a nine by 13 pan. I'm gonna grab some cooking spray because I hate when something sticks to my pan dries me bananas. So I'm just gonna spray the cooking spray. This is the olive oil one. All right, we're just gonna do that and we'll get rid of these things. And we're gonna set our little pan. I don't have a whole lot of counter space here, but I think it's like the best area to work in so you can see what I'm doing. So sorry that it's so tight, but I'm gonna set it right here. Here's my um, noodles. I'm gonna grab a pair of gloves because you know I'm a freak about the glove thing. I must go through a box a week of gloves, seriously. I need a glove wholesaler. Okay, I use them for everything. Okay, my lights are flickering, guys. Either that or I'm like having a brain hemorrhage or something. What is going on? I, they are flickering, seriously. Okay, so these noodles, these are the lasagna noodles. The one thing I'm gonna say, I bought these noodles and normally this doesn't happen. Do you see how these edges are coming off? I don't know what happened to this particular box of noodles, but they're kind of all doing that. But it's okay, I don't wanna throw them out. You know, I don't need to waste them. They're still perfectly fine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, and let me grab the chicken. See if I can fit this little chicken on here too. How am I gonna do that? There we go. Okay, can you guys see this? Hold on, let me try to manipulate everything so you can see. Okay, so I just lay the noodle down flat, and I'm gonna take like a spoonful of the ricotta, that mixture. I'm gonna put it on the end, the end, the very end, okay, of the roll up. And I'm gonna put the chicken on top, like so. And I'm just gonna roll it up inside that beautiful noodle, just like that. All right, and I'm gonna stick it right in the pan. That's it. That's it, let me show you one more time. And so if you put oil into your water while you're cooking your noodles, they won't stick together and you'll be able to like get them apart. If you don't, they're all gonna be stuck together and when you try to take them apart, they're gonna tear and you don't want that to happen. All right, so a spoonful, spoonful of your mixture right at the end. If you want, you can spread it, like you could do this, right? If you want, and spread it out over the whole thing. But why? I mean, it's just an extra step. So I'm gonna put, do that and put the chicken in, you know, about maybe a tablespoon of chicken in each roll up. And I'm gonna roll it just like so. You know, the one thing I have to say is that when you do spread it across the noodle, you get that beautiful, it looks throughout the whole thing like that, right? So if you wanna do it that way, it looks a little prettier, but it's still gonna taste the same in the end. So I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna finish the rest of them, and then I'll come back and I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do with our pretty sauce right here, okay? So I'll be back in a few minutes, and then we're gonna make the little addition to go along with this dish, and it's the homemade Caesar salad with croutons and homemade Caesar dressing that's just mind-blowing. You're gonna love it. I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back. I rolled all of them, and I made like three extra and just kind of squished them in a pan. Let's see what, two, three, four, five, six. I have 18 of them in here. I was able to fit 18 other roll-ups into this pan. So now, this is what I'm gonna do. Our beautiful, delicious Alfredo sauce. Oh my gosh, you guys. Mm. All right, this is, I'm gonna turn off that heat finally. And I just kept it on low and stirred it so that it just kind of, didn't thicken up too much. And I'm gonna take the Alfredo now and I'm gonna pour it all over these beautiful roll-ups. Oh yes, oh yes. You guys, oh, cannot wait to eat this, right? Okay, make sure you get it all out. Get it all out of there. Use a spatula and get every bit of that goodness out of that pan. All right, let's put that over there. And 
I'm just going to kind of use my spatula to make sure it spreads down evenly over all of them. All right, and now put that over there, mozzarella cheese. Hey, I never said it was good for you or low fat, did I? All right, so here we go. Here comes the cheese. We're going to just sprinkle the cheese, just enough to cover the top of it because you're going to bake it at 375 until it's golden, until the top and the cheese is all melted and golden brown. So while it's doing that, while we bake it, I'll make the Caesar salad and I'm going to show you how beautiful the Caesar salad looks when it's done. All right, so I think that's enough. Plenty, okay? Right there. So this is how it's going to look before we go put in the oven. You're not going to cover it. You're just going to stick it in the oven, 375, until it's nice and golden and bubbly on the top. I'm going to go preheat the oven. I'm going to get the ingredients for the Caesar, and I'll come right back. Okay, so while the oven is preheating, I'm going to make the Caesar salad dressing. And I promise you that once you make the Caesar dressing, if you like Caesar salad, you will never buy a bottle dressing from the store again. You'll make it at home every time because it's super, super easy, okay? So I'm going to start, um, I have my favorite bowl, just like I have my favorite little pan. I'm going to use this bowl here, and I'm going to start with two tablespoons of lemon juice. Um, don't use, do yourself a favor, don't use like the imitation lemon, use real lemon, okay? And sometimes I'll just give the lemon like a roll like this, and it kind of makes it, the juice come out easier from the lemon once I cut it. So I'm gonna cut the lemon in half. This should be plenty for two tablespoons, okay? And I'm not gonna, I know that I'm gonna get two tablespoons from it. So I'm gonna use one of these little strainers because I don't have a fancy little lemon squeezer. And I'm just gonna squeeze that juice from the lemon through the strainer to catch the seeds. There we go, that's about one tablespoon there. Oh yeah, and I'm gonna get rid of that. And then I'll do the other half. Nothing like fresh lemon, right? You don't want to use the kind that's fake when you can use real. All right, we got the second one, as much as I can get out of it. We'll get rid of that. Put that right there. All right. And the second thing I'm going to add is a clove of minced garlic. Now, um, you can chop up garlic if you want, but I really like how fine this is minced, the jar one. It's minced perfectly. So I'm going to use a teaspoon, and I'm going to add about a teaspoon of minced garlic in with the lemon juice. And now I'm going to add one teaspoon of Worcestershire. I sometimes put a little skinch more because I love this, but you don't want to go overboard because it's kind of strong, okay? So we're going to do one teaspoon and measure it right on in there. There we go. Shake it. I'm just going to dash more because I like it. Okay, and now we're going to do, I already measured out this mustard. It's um, a teaspoon and a half of Dijon mustard. Teaspoon and a half of Dijon. I'm just going to give it a little quick stir right there. And we're going to do a cup of mayonnaise, okay? One cup of real mayonnaise. You could make it with Greek yogurt, plain Greek yogurt. Um, I just don't think it's going to have that same rich flavor to it. I would stick with the real mayonnaise, not Miracle Whip. Do not, do not use Miracle Whip. I did that one time thinking, oh, it was what I had. It tasted terrible. Use real mayonnaise, okay? Real mayo. A cup of real mayo. Look at that, guys. I'm using a measuring cup. Holy hell. First time for everything. All right. Let's get that. I'm making a huge mess, too. Huge mess. My kitchen always is such a mess by the time I'm done cooking, but I try to clean as I go so it's not quite so bad. Sometimes that works out. Sometimes it doesn't. All right. Oops, sorry, guys. Um, we have one cup of mayonnaise. I'm going to put that right in there. I don't know why I didn't use, use the same special. I had to dirty another one. And then I am going to use a half a cup of Parmesan cheese. You can use um, this kind of Parmesan or you can use the shredded Parmesan. It's fine either way, okay? I'm going to use a half a cup of this. Dump it on in there. Oops, a 
little bit of mayonnaise on there. I'm going to dump it on in there. Now, this, this ingredient is super, super important, and you cannot forget it, okay? You cannot. Anchovy paste. Anchovy paste is the entire, the most important ingredient in the entire recipe. Anchovy paste. You can find it in the Italian aisle in Kroger. Um, Aldi doesn't carry it. I never find it there. So the Italian aisle in Kroger near the dry pasta has the anchovy paste. Do not skip it. Okay, we're going to do, I have my little recipe, a teaspoon and a half. Because sometimes I forget what I got to add. It's going to come out there. Hold on. Teaspoon and a half of anchovy paste. There's one that in there. I'm just going to fill it up halfway. There's a teaspoon and a half right there. Love. I do not like anchovies, but I'll tell you what, I like the anchovy paste in this. It makes the recipe. And one quarter teaspoon of black pepper. And I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. That's fine. Give it a few shakes. That's it. I'm going to make sure. Two tablespoons, blah, blah, blah. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, check, check, check. We did all of it. Now you're just going to take your little whisk and mix it all together. How easy was that? Seriously, how easy was that? Real easy. And I think, honestly, when you try to buy dressings and stuff in the store, um, they're super expensive, right? Like ranch dressing is like $4 a bottle or something. Unless you go to Aldi, they have really good prices on all their dressings and stuff. But um, this is super easy to make, and it's delicious. Every time I make it, People ask me about this dressing. So now we'll just give it a taste, you know, just to make sure that it has enough acidity to it. It's not overwhelmingly rich. You know, the acid kind of breaks up the richness of the dressing. So I'm going to give it a little taste just to make sure. Okay, a little taste. Perfection. It's perfect. All right. So, now my Caesar dressing is all done. I'm gonna clean up the disaster I just made. And then I'll come back and I'm gonna show you how I make my croutons for the salad. And I'll, we'll assemble the salad together. I'll show you how I do that. And then I'll come back and um, show you the end product and everything. We're almost done, you guys. We're almost done with a beautiful Italian meal for the night. So, I'll be right back. All right, ladies. Now we are ready to start making our Caesar salad, okay? I bought two big things of romaine. I'm gonna um, wash them, clean them up. I'm just going to set them aside in the calendar right now, and I'm going to make our croutons for the salad. You can buy basically any kind of bread, you know, a French loaf bread. You can buy rye bread, marble rye, whatever you want. I just got this, this rye bread right here because I like how the brown croutons look on a green salad, and I'm a very visual eater. Like, I love a lot of color in my food. So I'm just going to take the bread and cut it into chunks. You could even tear it into chunks. Like if you want it super rustic looking, you, instead of cutting it, you could totally just tear it and put it in a large bowl. I'm just going to chop them. They don't have to be perfect, you know, size or anything. You can just roughly chop them, you know, and then throw them in the bowl. We're going to do that. I'm going to do a lot of them because first of all, I like croutons and so does Sophia and we're always fighting over the bread part. So I'm gonna do quite a few croutons. Throw it in the bowl. Even this little heel of the bread can go. And dice them up. Ooh. I'm telling you, I know it's a high calorie recipe, but you will enjoy it. You will really enjoy it. All right. All right, here we go. Add a few more. I'm gonna add some more because I only have like that much so far, and I did about, I don't know, eight slices of bread. So I'm gonna do a little bit more. I got this set, you know, in the bakery aisle. I think it was like a buck 49 for the whole loaf. So I'm just gonna cut it all up. Okay, so I'm making croutons for you. Sophie loves croutons. In her Caesar salad. I made what you asked for, Sophia. Yeah, she's very happy. Okay. Alfredo! The roll ups. You know how I put the chicken and I roll them up yeah. and put these? Alfredo? You don't even know. I don't, they don't even know? You no. love it? You might thank you for that. It's going to start. Oh. 
hear that? She said, she said, you guys might make it, but not as good as her mom. No, I'm giving them my secret, so if they're going to make it just perfect. All right. All right. Almost done, guys. Almost done chopping the bread. I'm going to chop these in half one more time. Here we go. That's okay. All right, so there we go. We have that. Now I'm going to take some olive oil, and I'm going to give it a nice drizzle. And you are, you're going to do that until you can see that it's soaking up into the bread there. You want them all covered in that olive oil. So don't be stingy with the olive oil. I'm going to do it again. You know, you can't go wrong. They'll crisp up. So that looks pretty good. I'd probably use maybe two-thirds of a cup, maybe a little under of olive oil with that whole loaf and mix it out in there. You, you'll be able to guess because... You can see, you can kind of see the glistening on them. They're all getting covered in the olive oil, and that's good. That's good enough. Just as long as they have that flavor. Now, excuse me, Sophia. Sorry about that. And now I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of sea salt over the top of them, the sea salt grinder. I'm going to put a little bit of pepper on them, and I'm going to put some Parmesan cheese on them as well. There we go. Just sprinkle a little until it's covered. I'm gonna give it a good toss. Good toss like that. These look pretty good. All right, they're all covered. I lined a baking sheet with foil. If you have parchment paper, even better. I even went to the store and I forgot to buy parchment paper. So I'm gonna put these all on the cookie sheet. Could have used a bigger cookie sheet probably. Yeah, I definitely could have used a bigger cookie sheet, but that's okay. Because you kind of want them in a thin layer so they get crispy, okay? But that's okay. All right, so in they go. And I'm putting them in at 375, just on the bottom rack while my pasta is cooking. And it's fine. Just leave them in there till they get crunchy. You'll, in about maybe 10 minutes, check them and they should be done. So that's the croutons. So you have your Caesar dressing made, you have your croutons made. The only thing left to do is to prep and wash your romaine. Um, sometimes you can find it pre-washed, which is good, but I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go chop up the, all I'm gonna do now is chop up this romaine, wash it, and put it on a nice platter. So when everything is done, I'll come back and show you how I assemble it. And we're, we're done, that's it. Alfredo roll-ups and Caesar salad, amazing. I'll be right back, okay? I'll show you how it all looks when it comes together. All right, you guys, I just took the Alfredo roll-ups out of the oven, and they look to die for good, okay? I topped, I chopped some fresh parsley and just topped it just to give it a little bit of color, but look at that, nice and golden on the top. Smell amazing. Chopped that parsley up. So I chopped up the romaine for the Caesar. I have some Parmesan cheese. I'm just going to sprinkle that over the top. You could add fresh anchovies to this on the top as well. Some people really like the anchovy on their Caesar. If you do, go for it. You can find them in that same aisle at Kroger. Now I'm going to check on those croutons and just see where we're at with them. And you're probably going to have to let it cool just a tad before you put them on the salad. You don't want the salad to get wilted. You want it to have that nice crunch. Okay, so let's check out our croutons. They smell good. Here they are, okay? They look really good. Let's see if they're done. It's really hot. It feels done. They're good. They're not too hard. You don't want it to break somebody's tooth off. They're good. That pumpernickel bread, fantastic. So that's it. I'm going to let them cool a minute. I'm going to put them on top of my Caesar salad. Serve it with the Caesar dressing we made and these beautiful roll-ups. I have the table set. Just waiting on my brother now. The only thing missing is my lovely husband. He's working tonight. I'm really sad because he loves this meal. So I'm going to make him a little care package and either deliver it to him if I have enough time or have it all ready for him when he comes home. He loves it. So thanks for watching this video. I will take some pictures and post at the end of what it looks like put together. I don't know. I think it's pretty simple, right? I mean, it's not hard. You can whip that together pretty fast. The video is longer than it would take to actually have you make it. So if you have any questions, reach out to me. 
You guys have a great night. And as always, thank you for all the love you show me. I really appreciate it. See you later.